Hi everyone, this is Mike at Brash Monkey, and this quick tip tutorial is kind of a placeholder. In this video I'll be showing you a feature called sub-entities, and while it can be very useful, be warned that it is not yet feature complete. Um, you can use it to create animations that you can then export as PNGs or GIF animations. However, the feature is so new it is not yet supported in any of the Spriter implementations such as Spriter to Unity or the Spriter plugin for Construct 2. And once Subentities is feature complete, I'll likely be completely replacing this tutorial video online with one that shows the full feature set of uh, Subentities. So in its simplest form, what Subentities let you do is actually use entire additional animations within an animation as though they're simply just other images or bones. So for the sake of this example, I quickly threw together several stolen bits of images from the internet to create this futuristic car body, and I've animated the car body to have a series of shines going across it. So this is one looping animation for the body of the car itself, and then I created another entity called Car Tire, which has an animation within it, that has a spinning tire with a stationary uh, sort of hubcap, and then these, uh, these shines, animated shines on the tire as well. And I've created a new blank entity for the completed car itself. So what you can do, make sure you're at the zero in the timeline, and you literally, just as though you're clicking and dragging an image from the uh, file palette, you can actually left click and drag any animation from any other entity other than the entity you're editing. So in this example, I'm editing a new animation in complete car. So I can scroll up here and go to the uh, animation that represents the fully assembled uh, car body and just left click and drag that onto the canvas. And you'll see I now have this uh, car body and I can move it around just like it's an image but I've got this special uh, uh, sort of gizmos to transform it. I can do everything I usually could to a single image like stretch and scale uh, or rotate but that's not one image that's an entire animation. So I'm undoing my changes so I click and drag on the timeline to go to the end of the animation and I'm going to right click over this uh, dot here and you'll see this timeline up here and now I can drag along here to pick the specific point in its own in this animation's own timeline that I want the animation to reach by the time it's at this point in the main animation's timeline so now you'll see if I click and drag you'll see even in here that it's updating it's showing me where in that sub animation or sub entity uh, it is in its own timeline. So currently, um, uh, that's not very useful, it's identical to just if I play this animation on its own, but where it gets cool is now I can choose, let me go back to make sure I have this animation complete car selected, and I'm going to left click and drag car tire, and I'm just going to do that twice to add a fully animated and assembled tire to both the front and the back of the car. Uh, and now I'm going to hold the control key and uh, select this tire uh, sub entity as well and press control C to copy. I'm going to scroll to the end and press the two key to make sure I'm at the, the, the second keyframe that I created all the way at the end of the animation. And pre press control V to paste those tires in so that they're persistent throughout the entire animation. Um, make sure I'm at, I'm at that second keyframe. Right click on one of the car tires to bring up its, uh, its timeline. And then uh, we're going to do the same exact thing for the other tire. There we go. And now you'll see when I play the animation it's got all three looping animations in one frame. Or I should say, uh, within one cohesive animation. So to take things one step further, I created a few more animations in the completed car entity, the one called Second Animation, 
uh, actually sort of transforms the car into an off-road mode with a uh, higher suspension. And the third animation is simply a loop of that new animation with the higher suspension. So I'm just going to create another new entity quickly and we'll call this transformation sequence. So let's say in this transformation sequence we're going to start with our futuristic car uh, just rolling along until close to the halfway point. So I'm just going to go here on the timeline and right click and drag along so the tires have rolled a bit. Then just after that on the timeline I'm going to switch animations by right clicking and going into this list to choose the second animation. And now I need to make sure that uh, the animation starts at the beginning for the transformation. And I'm going to go a little past the halfway point here. And then just right click again and bring the transformation sequence all the way to its end. Okay, so now it's rolling along, starts its transformation. And now that it's finished its transformation, uh, we need to transition into the looping uh, transformed animation sequence. And so now we have the complete sequence of the car rolling along, transforming to its high suspension mode, and then rolling along in its new mode. And that's it. Uh, sorry for uh, all the little glitches uh, while recording this, and uh, keep in mind this is a new and unfinished feature. Uh, it's safe to use in that any animations you create will load in future versions of Spryder. Uh, and you can export your finished animations as uh, sequential PNG images or sprite sheets. Uh, these features are not yet supported in things like Spryder to Unity yet or uh, the Construct2 plugin for Spryder, so uh, be careful about that. And um, Obviously, missing so far in this feature is the ability to set specific sub-entity animations to just loop continuously on their own accord at whatever given playback speed you like. Uh, that's something we'll be adding uh, in the relative near future. Um, so I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching, and uh, have a great day.